right. Hello, wine drinking people. Fresh back from vacation and, uh, you know, I mean, something will get me home early is a burgundy tasting. And this has become an annual event for us. I think it's the fourth year we've done this to, uh, burgundy barrel sa sampling with uh, Louis Jadot. And we've had Philip Marshall here for the last three of them. Philip is the Philippe is the French expert for uh, Cobrand, the company that owns and markets and sells Louis Jadot now in this country. And let me tell you, this 2011 vintage, I mean, you know, you always want to think that the producers are telling you it's the greatest vintage ever. And, you know, they, they've described it, a lot of them as a cross between 2009 and 2010, two of the greatest vintages in recent history in Burgundy. And after tasting through a couple of series of wines from 2011, I would have to say I agree, man. It has the forward charm of 2009, and it has the structure and freshness of 2010. A little bit lighter in the alcohol range. They did have to chaptalize 2011, some of the wines, which, man, I haven't heard that word chaptalization a decade in Burgundy, but I guess, uh, you know, every once in a while they still need to add a little sugar to the wine. This is, was common practice in Burgundy in the old days, but I guess due to better winemaking techniques and they're picking the grapes later and riper now, they don't have to use this technique quite as much. But 2011, I like that comparison as we tasted through these Jadot wines. They do have this incredible forward fruit that makes them charming and drinkable today, but uh, they also have that freshness that you would lead you to believe that the wines... Look, the Gevry Chambertin Clos Saint Jacques will last 20 or 30 years in your cellar. We started out with a new property from Louis Jadot. They bought this property in 2008. It's a very old property in the Puy Fusse uh, region, though. It was founded in 1840, owned by the same family until the last family member died off in 2007. Jadot grabbed this wine up, and they're soon going to be reclassifying, or classifying, I should say, some of the vineyards in this part of the Mekon to Premier Cru, and this will definitely be one of the properties that you see uh, pick up some Premier Cru appellations, because just incredible terroir in this part of Puy Fusse. And uh, these wines at another level for Puy Fusse. And this is a name that's very popular in this country. And what happens when things get popular? They get a little overpriced. But I have to say that... Uh, this wine, lovely richness and density here, a lovely forward bouquet of red delicious apples, distinct minerality, kind of clay-like uh, mineral notes with candied lemon notes, and a touch of honey, really pretty floral notes starting to come out as this wine opens up, and a lovely viscosity on the palate, just layers of fruit, minerality, and lovely firm acidity coming out in this wine, holding everything together nicely. Excellent juice, one of the best Puy Fousses that you will find in the market today. All right, the Louis Jadot Santenay Clos de Malt up next, and this is a uh, vineyard that Jadot purchased in 1993. Jadot now makes almost exclusively wine from their own vineyards. I mean, they still do buy some fruit, but I would say 80 or 90 percent of the fruit under this label today is estate grown, which a lot of producers have gone to that. And uh, this is a small vineyard, and it does plant its red and white wine at the foot of the Montan de Trois Gras. And uh, the Santenay Clos de Malt uh, has more Pinot Noir than Chardonnay. It's got a limestone and clay soil. Really lovely green apple. Touch of lemon blossom floral notes. Gravelly, minerally, kind of wet rock note. Flinty, chalky notes to the bouquet. And uh, really clean and fresh on the palate, though. This wine has a nice, zesty lemon citrus uh, finish to the white peach fruit on the tongue. And uh, lovely mis minerality to this wine. Just really forward and delicious. A wine that's uh, easy drinking, but you, mean you could keep this wine around for 10 years in a good vintage like 2011. Bon Le Graves Blanc, Domaine André Gagné. This is uh, situated uh, in uh, the Graves, uh, the Bone region, one of the top premier crews here. I think there's like 40 or some odd premier crews in Bone. And uh, they bought this property in 1985, replanted it mostly to Chardonnay in 88 because of the sandy soils. And uh, these do much better with Chardonnay than with Pinot Noir. But this is a really elegant wine. It's got a lovely nose of fresh apples, kind of almond notes to this wine as well, to the bouquet, white flowers, really pretty, a good mineral to this wine, some gravelly minerally notes as well. Lovely lemon zesty citrus and little green apple fruit also on the palate with a precise minerality and just a whiff of toasty oak spice. They're using less oak and burgundy just like in the rest of the world. It's $1,500 today for a brand new French oak barrel. Ooh, ah. All right, this is excellent juice though. Um, a lot of people's, uh, some of the people's favorite wine on the table in the white category. The Chassan Montrachet though, really singing the Abbey de Morgeau and this vineyard was purchased in 1990. A premier crew, just like the Grebs Blanc is. Um, and uh, they have a church on this vineyard. And rumor, well, the, as the story goes, back in the day, people used to go to church three times a day. I can't tell you the last time I went to church. Well, I call work church. Anyways, uh, you know, they built a chapel right there in the vineyard so the people didn't have to leave the vineyard to go worship their God. And, uh, well, 
a good idea. Think about it. If you went to church three times a day, man, how much time would you have for work? Anyways, this wine's the soil's quite deep here, kind of marl and limestone, really rich and full-bodied wine, ripe pear and lemon cream pie-like notes to the toasty oak, vanilla cream brulee, and notes of vanilla, cinnamon spice, really lovely complexity in this wine, and lovely richness on the tongue, kind of a lemon cream pie fruit, uh, vanilla, chalky minerally notes to the soil, really rich, and uh, even drinking nice right now out of the bottle, that's one of the telltale signs of this 2011 vintage, a really lovely uh, drinkability to these wines, and these are barrel samples. These aren't even finished wines. A lot of these wines still in the barrel today. But uh, really nice balance and complexity here. An excellent bottle of Chasson Montrachet Premier Cru. The Pellini Montrachet Refairs. Hey, this is uh, one of the greatest villages in all of Burgundy. you got Pellini, Merceau, and Chasson Montrachet. And Pellini Montrachet is located to the south of Merceau, but to the north of Chasson. Kind of sandwiched right in between those two. And uh, some of the greatest white wines in the world. There's 19 Premier Crews. And, of course, the greatest Grand Cru, Straddles, Chasson, and Pellini, Les Montrachet. The Refairs is uh, one of the 19 Premier Crews in Pellini. And a wonderful concentration and complexity on the nose. This was the wine of the night for me in the whites. Lovely aromas of lemon drop candy, wet stones, vanilla bean, almonds, cinnamon spice here as well. Some wet stone-like minerality. Only one acre so they get about 86 packs of this wine in the u.s and that is it as i said wine of the night for me big and fat but still lovely restraint lovely balance lovely precision here a firm hand of acidity and a long mineral lace finish most excellent juice 66 dollars is that price right all right the courton charlemagne uh, up next this is one of the oldest vineyards uh it was purchased by jadeau in 1914 one of the oldest vineyards that they own located in the very heart of the appellation next to courton Pougeot, which is uh what the appellation is named for the red grand cru in courton and um really lovely minerality in this wine but courton charlemagne a big and fat wine but really needs a little time to open up you know this wine has uh, showing the forward nature of this vintage but um, really took the longest time to open up of all the wines on the table. Notice that chalky minerally notes, some zesty lemon citrus fruit in the bouquet. And uh, really big on the palate and layered through the finish, but uh, slightly oily texture to this wine as well. But still has nice balance, just needs a little time to come together. A little tightly wound at the moment. Most excellent juice, the Courton Charlemagne 2011. All right, on to the red wines. The uh, <clears throat> Chateau de Jacques Moulin Avant. And uh, this wine, you know, made the same way they make Burgundy. A lot of people are critical of Beaujolais because they use this carbonic maceration, which supposedly shortens the life of wines. But uh, in the great Beaujolais do not use carbonic maceration. If they do, maybe just a small portion of it. But this wine, uh, this is a 65-acre vineyard that was purchased by Jadot in 1996. A lovely spiced and flowery bouquet. You really notice the darker color in the Gamay varietal here. Moulin Avant can be a big and sturdy Beaujolais, black cherry fruit, notes of kind of raw meat, and uh, floral notes, violet floral notes showing as this wine opens up and uh, really opened up nicely and was great with the food the beef bourguignon last night was fantastic and uh really rich and fruity on the palate show lovely balance and lovely forward nature of this vintage but this is a classic vintage for beaujolais and uh, even better than 09 i don't know that's what philippe was saying but hey he's got to sell these wines not going to be too difficult as 2012 the next vintage really short. You know, 2010 was down, 2011 down also in size, but 2012, half of a normal crop. So you're going to see the price on everything start to inch up, including Beaujolais. All right, Pernod Vergelès was next. This is a Premier Crude Clos de la Croix de Perrier, and um, this is a uh, not far from the village of, of Pernod, actually the soil is calcareous, very stony here on the surface. Thus the Croix de Perrier represents a big cross that is on the entrance of the vineyard. And uh, most of the vineyard is planted to Pinot Noir. They do have some Chardonnay here. They do have a per, uh, white Pernod Vergelès also. Lovely balance and elegance in this wine. This wine always showing really nice, even right on release. I think we still have some magnums of the 2009 vintage of this wine. Some smoky notes to the strawberry and cranberry fruit on the nose. Light and pretty wine on the tongue with a softness and elegance that really makes this wine appealing today. Even though this was a barrel sample, it was like a finished wine. You could just drink the whole bottle of it down like a Pepsi. Delicious. Really good stuff and a great value at under 40 bucks. $33 on this pre -sale. And The great thing about Burgundy on our pre-sale is you can commit to it, we order it, and you don't have to pay for it until it comes in. These wines are not going to be shipped until the fall, so it's like Christmas. Well, not really. You have to pay for it when it comes in, so it's not like Christmas. You know, these other wines like Bordeaux on Futures, you pay for it when you order it, and then, you know, when it comes in, it's like Christmas. You get it, and it's already paid for, but... 
The great thing about Burgundy is you don't have to pay for it till it arrives. The 2011 Bone Boucherot uh, was up next, Premier Cru. This vineyard lies at the southern end of the commune, partially bordering Pomard. So this wine has some lovely Pomard-like notes to it. The deep uh, clay soil here definitely playing a part in the minerality of this wine. Jeanneau purchased this property back in 1836. Ooh, uh, uh, exotic spice bouquet, black raspberry, cherry fruit, very forward in aromatics and pretty floral notes, along with the herbal and medicinal notes of this wine, the tell signs of this vineyard and a really smooth and velvety texture on the tongue with good freshness a nice hand of that spice and herbal note coming through on the finish and lovely balanced distinct minerality an excellent bottle of wine and uh, still under 40 bucks a great value Chambeau Mousini one of my favorite village wines Le Bode Premier Cru and uh, these Chambeau Mousinis to me are just so pretty these wines have got a lovely lightness and a silkiness a sexiness to the texture but they have an incredible amount of nuance and spice on the finish. This is six acres. It was purchased by Judo in 1995. A lovely pretty nose here, raspberry and strawberry fruit, exotic spices. Like I said, lovely charming forward nature to this wine. Smooth and silky texture on the tongue with a nice hand of spice and a zesty fresh finish. A really charming wine and the most drinkable of all the reds on the table. Most excellent juice. $86. Let's we'll step it up in price here a little bit. Hey, after all, Chambeau Mousini is not a cheap date, and the village contains Mousini and Bon Mars at either end, two of the greatest Grand Crus in all of Burgundy. Champ Gevray Chambertin, Close Saint Jacques, the wine of the night. This is a wine that a lot of people speculate if they ever do elevate a vineyard to Grand Cru, the Clos Saint-Jacques will definitely be elevated. And uh, there's nine Grand Crus in the village of Gevry Chambertin, so a very important village in the Côte de Nuit. And the last two wines from the Côte de Nuit, the first three from the Côte de Bone in the white category. And the Côte de Nuit, as you get further up, the zip code's a little bit more expensive here. And... Um, this wine is big and spicy on the nose. A lot of exotic spices showing floral notes. Really big and juicy on the palate as well, but with some tannins coming through on the finish. And uh, you can keep wines like this 20 or 30 years in your cellar in an excellent vintage like 2011. Lovely spice and floral notes showing through all the way to the end. Very large in size, but still lovely elegance and finesse and restraint in this wine. As I said, some tannins. This wine's going to take a little while to come around fully, but still quite drinkable right now. Most excellent juice. I'd like to have this in my cellar 20, 30 years from now. As I would the Clos Vougeot, and uh, this is one of the largest uh, of all the Grand Cru's. Corton Charlemagne is larger, and uh, Clos Vougeot only reds. Corton Charlemagne, you have red and white wines in that vineyard, and uh, this is a... Uh, a vineyard that has 92 different winemakers. So you really find a lot of variants in the Clos Vougeot Grand Cru. And Jadot's wine has changed a little bit over the years. They bought this parcel in 85 and 86, and it's the lower portion of Clos Vougeot down near the road. So in excellent vintages like 2011, this wine can be just a standout. In difficult vintages, it can be a little bit more difficult to get these vines down near the road in the flat spot uh, ripe fully. This wine's got a lovely uh, uh, aroma here of mints, kind of exotic spices, raspberry and cherry liqueur, Really intense and forward and seductive, even right after opening. But uh, this wine needs a little bit of time. You can tell if you put it in your mouth. You know, it's lovely, forward, seductive nature on the, the nose. Not quite as seductive, but, you know, this 2011 vintage overall, very charming, very similar to 09 in that nature. You can just open these wines up and drink them. This wine's got bright acidity, excellent focus, and really continue to open up with more and more layers through the course of the night. But it needs a little time. It's still most excellent juice. And, hey, we had a little extra. These guys from Cobrand brought us a little 2010 Bone Clos de Ursules, one of my favorite Watt villages, one of my favorite premier crews from Bone in that village. This one had a lovely dark raspberry fruit, meaty notes, kind of truffly, gravelly, minerally nuance as well. Really smooth and silky texture. These 2010s have got some tannins to resolve, though. A big vintage, lots of acidity, high-toned fruit. Need, need a little time, but excellent juice. That's what I had to drink at our 2011 Jado Barrel Tasting. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.